George Bush carried out 9-11. Do you think some people in a cave, do you think some people in a cave were able to have NORAD stand down? Do you think that people in a cave were able to have all of this happen? It's a total and complete fraud. The New World Order is using terror to scare you into submission, and they will be defeated. And here in this supposed free country where they're trying to pass a law to stop this, they're here to talk to us. I witnessed local activists bullhorning Parliament, and the local police didn't have a problem with that. But as soon as I got on the bullhorn and began talking about pertinent issues, they became very upset and enrolled me into some type of troublemaker database. You've got to understand that governments stand to gain from terror to scare you into submission to attack. Dick Cheney, in September of 2000, openly wrote a document called Rebuilding America's Defenses, and he said, we need a Pearl Harbor event. The U.S. government wants to carry out terror attacks to blame it on their enemies. 9-11 was a self-inflicted wound. 9-11 was an inside job. It was orchestrated. It was engineered by the globalists. A few weeks after returning to the United States, I then read in the newspapers in horror that I had indeed been enrolled in a terrorist database. The identity cards, the compulsory identity cards that have been proposed for the first time in our history, around about 80% of the British people oppose the introduction of these cards. And it's not just cards, it's the databases that go behind that that allows the state to access private information and so on. And yet as a result of 7-7, it seems that these things will be steamrolled through our parliament. Um, wherever we look at the moment, there are assaults on civil liberties as a result, of course, of the so-called war on terror. Similar guidelines have been implemented inside the United States. A Virginia anti-terror training manual lists property rights activists as potential terrorists. A Texas manual lists those wearing Levi's jeans, having cell phones, and who are, quote, friendly towards the police as potential terrorists. In Arizona, they list those that make frequent references to the U.S. Constitution as potential terrorists. All of these guidelines have been produced by the federal government and distributed at the state level. The federal government itself has told police to be on the lookout for drivers who have road almanacs or driver atlases. All across the planet, governments are restricting free speech and setting up so-called free speech zones to stop their populations from demonstrating. Months later, Paul and Steve Watson came to Texas and joined me live on my radio broadcast to discuss the aftermath of the London bombings. We are joined in the studio by Steve Watson and Paul Watson. Guys, uh, you've been in the United States now for about seven days. How have you liked it? It's been pretty good so far. Um, obviously, it's all Western culture, so it's pretty similar. But... When we were in London, I mean, there were so many facets to it. But what was it like to have the police march up to you and uh, tell you to turn your camera off when you were just on a public street interviewing people? Well, I mean... The fear mongering at the time, we were there right after the bombings, um, three weeks after the first bombings, I believe, but then there was the second failed attempt. So the state of uh, panic was still quite high, even though Londoners basically were apathetic to the attack. Um, they just got on with their lives, they weren't really buying the government propaganda on it. We had case after case where we'd be out on the street doing interviews with people and we'd be showing the video cameras and there were people working right there at the Hard Rock Cafe and I'm like look at these cameras they're everywhere and they're in plain view and the manager comes out and goes you know thanks for showing me that I've never noticed those what's your name sir Charlie I'm Alex nice to meet hey, you Charlie Alex, how you doing? good what do you think of the new symbol of the United Kingdom is going to switch from the Union Jack to the black surveillance camera well you know there's plenty going on in London so they need the surveillance cameras everywhere but I mean it's going to be the new national symbol, or, or of course I'm being sarcastic, but really it has become the national symbol. Four plus million surveillance cameras in the great city of London alone. <laughs> the same about it. You know, I don't even see them there. <laughs> Do you don't see them? They don't nah, exist? Nah, nah. Four million in the city? That's the first time I've even noticed they're there, and I've been working here a year. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind, huh? That's it, that's it. That's kind of Orwellian, though. You seem like a smart guy, but did you know only the smartest people in the inner party know how to engage in doublethink and doublespeak? 
where you don't even notice the cameras that are there. In fact, if you say they're not there, they're not there. Here, together, let's say they don't exist. All right, they don't exist. Two they plus two exist. equals five, hey. <laughs> Hey, you could get an inner party membership. All right, I'm into it. I mean, that that was actual double thing. Steve, Paul, you want to comment on that? Well, let me read a quote from Orwell from 1984. Double thing is an unending series of victories over your own memory, reality, control. To know and not to know, to be conscious of complete truthfulness while telling carefully constructed lies, to hold simultaneously two opinions which cancelled out knowing them to be completely contradictory and believing in both of them, to use logic against logic to repudiate morality while laying claim to it. And this is exactly what we saw over and over again in London. You've got a nest of, what, six or seven cameras and people are out there saying they've never noticed them. It's like, it's a survival mechanism to deny reality, but at the end of the day it's not even a survival mechanism, it's quite dangerous. Um, we were asking the attitudes of taxi drivers about the bombings. They were all quite ambiguous. They kind of believed the government line at that point. Do uh, you ever wonder who's really behind it? Um, well, I've heard different... There's people who think that it are the governments behind it. You know, British governments, American governments. People have said that. Oh, really? You heard that some people think it's the government? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. Really? How popular is that view? Um... Uh, pretty unpopular, I would have thought. It is straight out of George R. Wells' 1984. This poor woman thinks that if you give up your liberty, you supposedly get freedom. Yeah, well, we went to Stockwell Tube Station where they shot the Brazilian man. We basically noticed this woman who was working on the fruit stall. She'd been interviewed on the BBC. I'd seen her on there, so we went over to interview her. Um, we were talking to her, and Alex asked her if she would sacrifice liberty for security. And she came back with, yes, I'll sacrifice liberty for freedom. I think people should give up their liberty for freedom. Liberty and freedom are the same thing. We then asked her again to clarify, just in case she made a mistake, and she said the same thing again. She was willing to give up liberty for freedom, which is really, it's direct double think, because the, the two things mean the same thing. We found the same mindset in Crawford, Texas, outside Bush's ranch that we witnessed in England. Populations who are willfully ignorant, who revel in being lied to. Well, we're on our way out to Crawford, where President Bush is vacationing for five weeks. He spent about a fourth of his time in uh, the administration out here at his Hollywood set. Though he admittedly is afraid of horses and the cows and many other forms of wildlife, and of course, he was born in Kennebunkport, Maine, and spent most of his life there. He likes to put on a cowboy hat and a big belt buckle and strut around. He meets with all these different world leaders and decides to, uh, you know, basically how to carve up the world. He meets with the Saudi leaders and holds hands with them. He meets with Ariel Sharon. He meets with leaders from all over the world, but he certainly doesn't meet with the mothers of dead soldiers. have any skin in the game so it's easy for them to say you know let's let's keep our troops over there let's complete the mission even though we don't even know what the mission is that's really a theme that we got to get them before they get us do you think Iraq attacked us on 9-11 on maybe not Iraq itself but the belief in the cause that those people have is yeah absolutely 15 of the 19 hijackers came from Saudi Arabia Bush is out at his ranch holding hands with the royal princes, but then we've got to go into Iraq. No, I mean, seriously, sir, it's a serious yeah, no, issue. Yeah. I know where you're going. Where do you think we're coming from, though, sir? I mean, I mean tell me. Well, are you trying to connect this, uh, we're in bed with Saudi Arabia BS, and th this is all a big farce to get Saudi oil and all that, and it's, that's not what it's about. So our government isn't in bed with Saudi, okay. While in Crawford, we ran into Ray McGovern and spoke with him about Iraq. Ray McGovern is a retired, senior-level CIA analyst whose career spanned the administrations of John F. Kennedy to George H. W. Bush. His duties included chairing national intelligence estimates and preparing the president's daily brief. I believe that they are still interested in permanent military bases there. I believe they are still interested in controlling the oil from that part of the world. And so it will be stay the course 
it will be six, seven, eight uh, U.S. troops killed every day or every week. Uh, and what's below the surface here was revealed to me by a, a very well-heeled gentleman who came up to me after a speech I made outside of Milwaukee in a very affluent suburb. He said, Mr. McGovern, uh, get real. I mean, what's your problem? He said, uh, you, you don't have any problem with, you, you don't deny that we need the oil, do you? And I said, no. He says, well, you know, six, seven, eight, ten Marines a week uh, for the oil. It's, you have to admit that's a, that's a very, very cheap price for the oil. I said to him, I said, you know, how do I handle this? I said, well, the utilitarian argument is probably the best. I object to it, said I, because we can't do it. There are 1.3 billion Muslims in this world. They're not going to let us do it. It's already the, widening. The borders are, are porous. We can't do it. Well, that didn't convince him. He said, well, I think we can do it. I said, oh, well, suppose, suppose your son was one of those six killed in Iraq uh, last week. And you know what? He looked at me like it had never occurred to him. And it wouldn't have occurred to him because it wouldn't be his son, you know. It would be the sons from the farms. It would be the sons from the cities. And so he said, well, I don't buy that either. So I'm trying, well, well, maybe I'll try a moral argument on him. I said, uh, well, do you, are you one of those that uh, likes to have the uh, Ten Commandments brought into the schoolhouses and the courtrooms of this? He said, oh, that's a great idea. I said, well, you know, if memory serves, there's one that says, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's oil. I mean goods. Uh, don't bear false witness. There's one. Don't forget ever hold up. There's one that says you shouldn't steal. And there's also one against killing, if I remember correctly. So maybe you want to subtract four and bring in the six commandments into the schoolhouses and the courtrooms of this world. Get real, I said. This is a moral issue. We shouldn't be going around killing unarmed civilians and, and causing more violence where violence is endemic. And what did he say, sir? He turned on his heel, marched out to his SUV, prayed for cheap gasoline, and drove home. I want the oil. Let's educate them, bring them into democracy and take their oil. Apparently somebody took too much yellow acid and, uh, and got you know, the story wrong. The majority of the construction, and the vast majority, like I'd say 90% of the construction that I saw wasn't with the Iraqis, it was with the American bases uh, that they were building. Con concrete structures, incredibly permanent, uh, designed to house thousands of soldiers for a long period of time. The American people are being kept in the dark about all this. If it weren't for shows like yours and for a few others and the internet, uh, people would never have a chance to learn the, the truth of this. What Cindy Sheehan has done is brought a, a human dimension to this. They said, look, people are getting killed, including my son. A lot of Iraqis are getting killed. Uh, why don't we face up to whether this war makes any sense at all? Do we really want to have uh, our young people sacrificed for, for, for what? We don't know. We don't know what's going on. To tell you the truth, my kids don't know the things that are involved in the decisions I make at my house. And that doesn't mean that they need to be involved in the, in the decisions because I know better than they know because I'm more informed. And I'll give him that same benefit. You know, we did elect him. Where have we lost our freedom? All across the Where? They're using Homeland Security against topless bars. They're using Homeland Security against toy store owners. They're using Homeland Security against pot dealers. And that's wrong. They're using Homeland Security, quote, against gang members. It's admitted. Are you familiar that the Gulf of Tonkin never happened? LBJ tapes have not been released. We went to war. Well, you know, I just got to point out to Wolfowitz and Pearl and Feith and um, Abrams and uh, Wormsers, you know, people like that, who, who this has been their, their plan and it's, it's about, you know, it's about imperialism, it's about abusing a nation's natural resources, it's about, it's about greed and power and it's nothing about keeping America safe or freedom and democracy for the Iraqi people. I believe uh, that America right from the start of the Bush administration uh, has been fixed, has been focused uh, on the use of American military power in order to extend control by America of strategic areas in the world. Now we have the, the Downing Street minutes which show that as early as July 23, 2002, uh, the head of British intelligence just back from Washington said to his prime minister, it's a done deal. The decision for war is inevitable. The war will be, quote, justified 
by the conjunction of terrorism and weapons of mass destruction and intelligence and facts would be fixed around the policy of war. There's the proof that the